Are you interested to know about how the rich people get richer whilst everyone else is working a tiring job and they just can't seem to get ahead? Well, the answer is very simple and it's called investing. But when it comes to investing, it's not enough to just start making investments. You need to understand what you want from your investments. Are you looking for capital gains? or do you want cash flow? So before you go out and start investing, you need to know what is it that you expect to get from your investments. And if you stick all the way to the end of this video, you will learn exactly what is a capital gains investor, what is a cash flow investor, and by understanding each one, you can start taking advantage of these two investment approaches and begin making more money without having to work more hours at your job. I will also give you examples of investments that you can make for each approach to give you a good understanding of what is available out there for you. If that sounds good to you, then stay tuned. Hi guys, it's Marius and welcome back to Money Employed. If this is your first time here and would like to join our community of money employers and finance junkies, then all you have to do is just hit the subscribe button. It's absolutely free and you will always be up to date with the content if you do that. Also, if you enjoyed the video, please make sure to give it a like because it really helps out the channel with the YouTube algorithm and that way more people can get to see the video and learn from it. So if you want to start making money like the rich people do, you need to approach things differently. The rich don't work for money, instead they make money work for them. And it doesn't even have to be their own money as we will see later in the video. But how do they make money work for them? Well, the way they do it and the way you can do it too is by investing. And investing is just the act of allocating resources typically money, in an effort to generate profit or an income. One of the main reasons people invest is because money loses value over time due to inflation. And inflation is basically an economic phenomenon by which the price of goods and services increases over time. For example, with an annual inflation rate of 2%, which is a target for both the UK and the US. What you buy this year for £100 will cost you £102 next year. So when people have money sitting in the bank, earning them little or no interest at all, they look for places to invest that money so that they don't make a guaranteed loss because of inflation. Ideally, they will look to invest in something which makes a return that's at least higher than the inflation rate. But when it comes to investing, there are two principles that you can follow. You can invest for capital gains or you can invest for cash flow. And you can choose to do both at the same time, but it's better to choose one of them as your main focus, even if you choose to do the other one now and then along the way. So let's begin with investing for capital gains, okay? As a capital gains investor, what you are looking for are assets that you can buy low and sell them high. And to do this, you need to be able to identify when an asset is undervalued or underpriced. So for example, let's say you buy one share of a company for £10 and after one year, the price of that share goes up to £20 and you decide to sell it. Well, that means you will have made a £10 capital gain. Now, of course, there might be some trading fees or taxes that you have to pay on that capital gain, but in principle, you made £10 in profit or a 100% return on investment. And well done to you because that's a great ROI. One thing that you do need to know about this investment principle is that it's not based on speculation, although there is a risk of speculation with any investment that you can make. But as a successful capital gains investor, you don't buy an asset and then pray that it goes up in value because that is just pure speculation and you're basically gambling with your money. There's a huge difference between investing and speculating and you need to be able to distinguish between what is an investment and what is a gamble. So let me give you an example. Let's say you find a property selling for £100,000 but it needs a light refurb and the vendor is looking to get a quick sale. However, when you do your due diligence, you find out that in the same area, properties sell for £130,000 if they're in a good condition. And because you're good with such investments, you know that the refurb should cost you about £5,000 so you decide to buy the property and fix it up. And assuming the refurb does cost you £5,000 and you get to sell the property for let's say £125,000, you still make a £20,000 profit. Now this is a very very simplified example because I just want you to understand the principle and the thinking behind it. So in this example you didn't buy the property and hope that it will go up in value. Instead, what you actually did is you assessed the property correctly and as a result, you managed to buy an asset that was underpriced. Then with a fairly low amount of money, in this case 5,000 pounds, you forced the appreciation of the property close to the average price in the area. And you knew that even if you were to sell it below the average market price, you would still be making money. All that was based on careful research and knowledge of how things work. Now I know that most people are not able to go out there and do this. I cannot do this either. 
yet. But you can absolutely be a capital gains investor with little money as well. One way to do this is to buy products when you find them at a discount and sell them at retail price on places like eBay for example. I do this all the time when I'm out shopping and I see a gadget or something at a huge discount. I'll check for how much that product usually sells on eBay and if it makes financial sense I'll just buy it and post it on the platform and they usually sell pretty quickly as well. So as you can see being a capital gains investor is doable even at a much lower scale. Now let's talk about investing for cash flow. This is when you buy an asset and you hold on to it expecting to make a constant income from it either monthly, quarterly or annually. This income can be received for example in the form of dividends when investing in stocks but it can also come in the form of rental income when investing in real estate. Investing for cash flow offers the opportunity to not have to rely on a job or a steady paycheck and in many cases it can be a very solid source of passive income. Take for example dividends received from investing in stocks. At the time of this recording AT&T pays a dividend of 52 cents per share quarterly. So if you were to buy 100 shares of AT&T which right now would cost you roughly $2,900 you would be receiving $52 every three months in dividends although the amount can go either up or down over time. However AT&T have been increasing their dividend amount every year by one cent since 2010 and have been paying dividends to the shareholders for 36 consecutive years which is a long time if you think about it. But here's a really cool aspect of investing for cash flow in dividend stocks and this is how you can grow your wealth at a compounding rate. Using the previous example let's say that every quarter when you receive your dividends instead of taking that money out and spending it you choose to reinvest it by buying more shares of AT&T. If you do this the number of shares that you own will increase and because of that you will now receive more money in dividends every single quarter and then you just rinse and repeat the process. But let me be clear and please understand that I'm not saying that you should go out there and start buying AT&T shares. This is just an example and you should not take it as investment advice. Always do your own research before investing in anything or speak to a professional if you need support with this. Now if you want to take your cash flow investment game to the next level you need to consider investing in rental properties. The income you can get from rental properties is typically higher than what you will get from dividend stocks for example. And one of the main reasons for that is because real estate is one of the easiest asset classes that you can leverage. But what do I mean by leverage? Basically when you purchase property you don't need to pay the full amount out of pocket as you would when buying shares for example. So let's say that you want to purchase an investment property for £100,000 but you only have £25,000 available. Well not a problem because if you want to purchase an investment property you typically need to put down a 25% deposit and the bank will lend you the remaining 75%. However the rental income that this property will produce is 100% yours and after you pay the mortgage and all other related costs for a property like this you can expect to make a realistic £200 per month in profit. In many cases from a regular single buy to let property you can expect to make annual returns of between 10% and even 20%. So you basically benefit from an asset that costs £100,000 by investing only £25,000 which is only a fraction of the total cost of the property and you can do this by simply using leverage. Not to mention the fact that you can directly impact how much the property will make you because you have more control over the operational costs and the quality of the property. And remember earlier when I said that it doesn't have to be the rich people's money working for them? This is exactly what I was referring to because in this example you use other people's money to make investments that will generate you a higher income. I actually made a whole video on this topic a while back and you can check it right up here but I'll also put a link to it in the description below. Investing for cash flow can also be done by becoming what is called an angel investor. Property developers for example are always looking to raise finance for different projects that they want to undertake. I don't know about the US but here in the UK angel investors are offered annual returns of between 5% and 10%. Now compare that with the low interest rates offered by banks which lately have been offering less than 1% per year. And the best part about these loans from angel investors to property developers is that they're usually secured against property. So if you don't have a large enough deposit to purchase property yourself but would like to benefit from investing in the property market then this could be something you might consider as a cash flow investment opportunity. There is one platform in the UK that I know of where you can invest in property development projects and earn up to 8% per year but as with any investment your capital is at risk and you need to do your research 
before investing. Now you might be wondering which investment approach to follow because they both sound promising. Ultimately, it all depends on your circumstances and your financial goals. If you like to be more of an active investor and are looking for higher returns in the short term, then you can focus on capital gains. On the other hand, if you want to build wealth over time or are looking to replace your job through income producing assets, then it makes more sense to invest for cash flow. However, if cash flow is what you want, but you don't have enough funds to buy something like a rental property, you can begin down the capital gains route in order to raise money quicker through buying low and selling high. And once you raise enough for a deposit, you can then purchase an investment property for cash flow and then do it again until the profit from all your rental properties is higher than your monthly living expenses. There's actually a property investing strategy called the Burr method that allows you to recycle your initial deposit over and over again and it helps you build your property portfolio much quicker than if you had to raise deposits for every single property. But that's a subject for a different video. So I think it's great to use these two investment approaches in conjunction with one another but always know which one is your main focus. And always make sure you do your research properly regardless of the approach that you choose. Remember that you are an investor and not a speculator or a gambler. And that is it for this video guys, I really hope you enjoyed it and got a ton of value out of it. If you have, please make sure to hit the like button because it lets me know that you guys enjoyed the content that I put out. Also if you want to show your support for the channel, subscribing and clicking the notification bell really does the trick with the YouTube algorithm. By the way, if you want a free stock, use the link in the description below to sign up with Trading212 and they will give you a free stock valued up to £100 when you deposit £1. As always, comment your thoughts and questions below and let me know if there's any particular subject that you would like me to cover in the future. Also, please share with the community in the comments below if you prefer to invest for cash flow or for capital gains. I would really like to know which one of them you find more appealing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.